All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, it is currently 10 below zero outside, uh, so very cold. And we have a wind chill down to 28 below. So that being said, I decided to do an inside project today. So here we have a Briggs & Stratton flathead uh, five horsepower engine. More accurately, does it say fun power? Yeah, so this is a actual go-kart engine. Um, and that's what it was used for for the majority of its life. So it is very worn out. I rebuilt the carburetor. It still runs kind of like eh, so-so. Um, it is uh, smoky. It's blowing oil out the exhaust. It uh, knocks. Um, not a whole lot we could do about the knocking, but uh, today we are going to tear this down and hone the cylinder and clean up the valves to try to get back some compression that it may have lost. So stay tuned. All right, so I got our engine here. First thing we're gonna be doing is pulling off this leaky fuel tank and carburetor uh, because we're gonna have to remove it anyway and it stinks. So I'm gonna try to get this outside of my sealed up house as soon as possible. We're just taking off these screws that hold down the air cleaner assembly. They're just 5 sixteenths. All of this is standard. All right. These are 7 sixteenths as well. That much better. And then also uh, new gaskets are always a good idea too. But, uh, you know, I only got 25 bucks into this engine. And, uh, you know, it's not going to see a whole lot of runtime. It's not something I have to rely on. It's just a toy. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, hone it, clean it up, get it going again. I will RTV this gasket because, as you can see, that's a piece of grass. But as you can see, it's leaking like a sieve. All right, now that I got the fuel tank off, you can see you have a kill wire. I'll get something to point with. You have the kill wire up top, then your linkage from the throttle and governor and then you also have a kill wire down at the bottom and then a return spring for your throttle just do your best not to bend it work it at whatever angle you need there we go all right now i got that smelly fuel tank out of the house brought it out to the garage uh, next i am just going to drain the oil Wow! Oh, and it smells like gas, too. I'll show you guys after this is done draining. Alright, so uh, this is the oil that came out that has five minutes of runtime. It smells like gas, which usually you'd look at a stuck float or something, but this has a uh, diaphragm pump style carburetor so it doesn't drain into the cylinder and there is no evidence of gas draining in on the intake so this engine just has a ton of blow by which is all the more reason for us to rebuild it so uh, so next we are going to need to take off the the fan shroud slash pull cord assembly yeah I'm pretty sure it has a rod knock but that's okay it'll be fine for uh, my purpose is here. <laughs> All right. Fan shroud is off. Nut is off. Now we'll go get that puller. All right. I'll back it up to unjam it. And that is all there is to pull in the flywheel. And that one was a little oily. So pull this off. All right, let's see what we got going on. Um, no, we did not have, we didn't have a failure of the head gasket, so that's good. Carbon buildup is a lot less than I would have expected. Um, there is plenty mind you, but uh, there lies the real issue. All right, here's a close-up of the cylinder. You can see all the scoring, and you can see a little bit of aluminum there that got hot, 
it started melting off. So I imagine this is due to the oil leak and it just got ran out of oil. There you go. You always want to use wood so that you don't don't mess it up. You don't want to pry in there because that'll mar your gasket mating surface. Alright, and then we'll take this dirty, dirty cover off. Oh! Okay. Yeah, that is nasty. Alright, and then we're going to pop this cam right off here. Kind of just wiggle that. Uh, let's inspect our cam lobes. They aren't too bad. And then when you angle it, there's a double slot. And if you can get out of that double slot, you can then pull the valve out. You want to use a twisting motion because this one and that's all there is to it right there this one is very dirty at the bottom past the retainer so of course it does not want to go through the bore so you want to clean that out as much as you can and then kind of just use a twisting motion to get it out all right so uh, here's a close-up of that exhaust valve you could see it was sealing. That's right here. You're just looking for it to be uniform. Uh, there's a few spots where some crap got in there, but overall that one wasn't so bad. Okay, I just got the intake valve out here. Um, I don't know if this is showing up very well on camera, but there is a bit of rust down at the end here. Yeah, that's just showing up as black for you guys. I'll see if I can get a better angle. So water did get in the engine. Um, the valve was still sealing okay. Have a lot of carbon buildup, so that would have been from the blow-by more likely than not. Uh, so yeah, I think this just got left outside. And uh, that, that happens with go-karts, and this is the result. It... Uh, wrecks the inside of your engine. Well, let's get this piston out of there. All right, I just got that uh, bearing cap off and uh, hopefully you guys will have seen the close-up if I remembered to edit it properly. Uh, it's got somewhere, but I mean, it's not, it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not, it's not catching a nail. Um, you can see in there, it is, uh, it was well oiled, uh, so this shouldn't knock. Uh, yeah, it should be okay. Now we're just rotating this to top dead center and then back around down until the weights are out of the way. Then we could just put our finger in there. Right there, I'm just gonna be pushing up and everything pops out the way it's supposed to. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah, so that aluminum was just the piston skirt rubbing uh, when it was low on oil. Uh, no real surprises there. Now we could just pull our crankshaft out. All right, everything's looking great there. Nothing too terrible. All right, we now have our disassembled block that is very dirty inside and out. All right, after lots and lots of scrubbing, we have a clean-ish engine, at least clean enough to work with now. So you can see I cleaned out the inside, got rid of all that sludge, got rid of all the grime on the sides, all the way around. It's a nice clean engine. So now we need to hone out that glazed and scored cylinder. Oh, I did forget, I do still need to clean and lap the valves. So this is why it's just so important to hone because a lot of this stuff doesn't show up until after you hone and get the glazing off, but I don't know if you guys can see there where it was melted. It is now, uh, basically pitted there. So I'm going to have to keep going with the thick one a little bit more, or the heavy grit, to try to take more of that material off. Now this is kind of where you'd want to get new piston rings, but like I said, it's a low, low buck project, so we're going to roll with it.
there we go. Now I can just wipe out all of that oil and I'm going to go through this whole thing with degreaser again just to get as much of the aluminum shavings out as possible or more accurately aluminum dust. We want that to be super duper clean. All right, here's another close up for you guys. As you can see, it's not great. We still have a lot of scoring, but for the most part, it's better. Now, trying to see if I can get a nail on that. You know, and I can't. So it looks worse than it is. This is doable now. This should really burn a lot less oil. All right, now that I have my valves cleaned up here, all I did was put them against the wire brush on the bench grinder for a few seconds to get rid of the carbon. Um, now that they're cleaned up, we are going to seat them back here to make sure they match, uh, because otherwise if you clean off that carbon and you don't seat them properly, they uh, can leak and then you have compression loss. So all I'm doing is putting a very small amount of valve grinding compound on the outside ring surface there. Just try to get as even of coat as possible and very small amount. And then we will coat the stem of the valve in motor oil so it doesn't wear out while we are doing this. And then we're just going to twist it down into its bore Okay, so I actually figured out a pretty good hack here, and that is just a few drops of super glue, and then you get the other valve on there, and then you can put your drill chuck on that valve. And then, automation. All right, so uh, the super glue was kind of fun to get off <laughs> to uh, break that bond. It took a lot of effort, uh, but uh, a little heat from the stove burner solved the problem. So now I have the piston in a piston ring compressor. I'm going to thoroughly lubricate the walls of the cylinder again. There we go. Then you just kind of tap it in with the end of your hammer. Now you can hear each ring release and then that's it. it so I'm going to get this back together and I'll cut back to when there's something new going on. Alright, so there are the two dots that you have to line up. Smearing it around evenly. And then once I have this evenly coated, I will just put the cover on and let it sit. And then I am going to uh, tighten up the bolts, just finger tight, and then come back 45 minutes later. And then you can do the, the all the way tight, the torque tight. Now it should go on. Yes. Okay. I do, however, have some oil in there that needs to be mopped up, otherwise that is not going to seal. Alright. Yep, that is sealing well. Okay, now it's just a matter of putting in the bolts and we should be good to go. Alright guys, thanks for watching. This is as much as we're going to do for one episode because I need to let our TV dry overnight um, before I can tilt it because uh, then oil would damage the RTV. So that is the, the end of the episode for now. Um, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more motorized content, uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys next time.